Yo, YouTube fam, how y'all doing? TM Nation, how y'all doing? It's your boy Tecmo here again, back with another video. And before we get into the video, do your boy a solid and check out hoodednation.com. Like the Facebook page and check out what they have to offer. Use my code, T-E-C-H space M-O-E, and you will get 10% off your entire order. It only lasts for a certain amount of time, so buy what you're gonna buy and get 10% off. They have all kinds of dope hoodies, t-shirts, bomber jackets. They have something for everybody. I appreciate y'all. Stay tuned. Yo, YouTube fam, how y'all doing? TM Nation, how y'all doing? It's your boy Tech Mo here again, back with another video. This is episode two of Grow With Mo. And like I said, I'm gonna show you guys what I use to edit my videos and give you guys my recommendations on what you should use if you're just starting out and you don't have a lot of money. So that being said, I personally use two different programs to edit my videos. It depends on what I wanna achieve in those videos. Do I need graphics and things of that nature? Or if I'm using my PC, I use a specific program. If I'm using my Mac, I have a couple different options. But that being said, I do most of my editing on my Mac computer, so hands down for me, iMovie has been the best choice for me to use. And the reason why I say that is this Mac that I'm using is a 2010 iMac and iMovie was free. And as you can see here, iMovie, you can get it for free and download it if you have a Mac right now. And if you're just starting out, iMovie is easy. The interface is simplistic. It's not hard for you to get. That's what I started out on. I did use Final Cut Pro for a while but Final Cut Pro is 300 bucks. Once my trial went out on that, I didn't see where I needed to spend the $300 because iMovie really can do most of what I needed to do. Now, when I'm using my PC, all I use is Filmora Wondershare. And if you guys wanna see what I was able to achieve with Filmora, look at my NBA Live video and all the different features and different ins and outs that I put into that video that was all done through Filmora Wondershare. And what makes it so cool is that all I did was have to press a button to do a lot of those effects. I didn't have to do anything in Adobe After Effects, in Adobe Photoshop, none of that. All that stuff was done with pre-installed effects that are in Filmora Wondershare. And you also have a marketplace with Filmora where you can buy callouts, different effects packages. Filmora is really good for somebody that's just starting out that doesn't know how to make these effects but wants to have high quality looking video. But I have purchased Filmora on my Mac and on my PC because when I'm down here editing on my Mac, some things are just easier for me to do in Filmora and then to download and put into iMovie. And Filmora is a great deal in my opinion because you can get it for one Mac or one PC for $44.99 a year. Or if you want a lifetime license for one PC or one Mac, you can pay a little bit more money at $59.99. But what I'm gonna do in this video is show you the interface and some of the things that you can do in Filmora. But I'm actually gonna edit my video in iMovie, which is free, like I said, because that's usually what I use for most things. And if you guys want, in a future video, I can edit a whole video in Wondershare so you guys know how that looks as well. Okay guys, so this is the interface for Filmora Wondershare. Now I'm just gonna walk you through the basics of why I like this program and give you an idea of what all you can do inside of it. Right here are some of the files that I have uploaded into Wondershare. So if I wanted to edit one of these videos, this is all raw footage. If I wanted to edit some of this footage, all I have to do is drop it right here this is your workspace down here once it's down here you can do what you need to do with it you can cut it add transitions you can do all that kinds of stuff so i'll just give you an idea and one thing that you always want to do is click this pre-render button it makes everything that much quicker so i always do that and depending on how big the file is that you're rendering 
It may take a little while, but trust me, it makes everything smoother when you're trying to play back the clips and see what you're editing in real time. And one thing to notice, you see this little bar right here at the top that's red? Once it's done rendering, it will be green, letting you know that it's good to go, that has already been rendered, and you can see it in real time. Okay guys, so now you can see the bar at the top is green and it's done rendering. Okay, so let me explain the different sections you have down here in your workspace. The top section is the video section, obviously. This is where you can edit your video footage. The second is still pictures. If you have a certain section of your video where you want it to be a still picture, you can upload that into this section. This will be your text section right here. That is for if you add any type of text to your video, maybe a subtitle or something of that nature. Then down here you have two sections for audio. Say you have a music track playing and you wanna do a voiceover or something of that nature, you can edit those two independently. And you can detach your audio from your video just in case you wanna work with it that way. As you can see now, once I detach my audio, it has went down here and now I have three tracks for audio. And I'm just gonna show you guys the way that I edit my videos. There are other ways out there, but this is how I do it. So this specific piece of footage, I know that the beginning of it, I don't need because I was setting up my equipment. So all I would do right there is take this little red bar here, put it to where I want the footage to start, and then Command B to split the clip. Okay, so as you can see, now they are split. And then once I do that, all I have to do is highlight that, press delete, and it's gone. So if I wanna see what I have left, I can press space bar and see where it starts. Okay, so another way that you can delete parts of a clip is that if you go to the beginning or end of a clip, all you have to do is drag it and you will delete. And you can see what you're deleting as you're dragging so as you can see i keep dragging keep dragging keep dragging i was looking up at the sky setting up stuff during all that so i don't want any of that footage i can stop it right there and then as you can see that's where my video starts now press start and all that other footage is gone so now i'm going to show you guys a couple of the designs that you can use in filmora is really pretty cool and just to show you how you import footage down here all the way to the left is the media import and that will detect all the footage that you have and you can click on multiples if you want and import them that way and right here is pre-installed music that you can use this is royalty free stuff so if you use any of this music or any of these audio clips you will not get a copyright strike on your video, or you shouldn't. And the third one down is all text, and you have all, you can view all that they have to offer. There are more on the website that you can purchase, but this is all that they include for free, and it's quite a few. It's definitely enough for somebody starting out. Then you have openers, and you can preview the opener right here on the right. Just click on it, and that is how it will look your title here and it's very easy to edit it all you do if you do want this in your video click add to project or you can drag it and drop it then down here as you can see it's in the text spot double click on it and then whatever you want your title to be you put it in there maurice's video i would never name my video that but just for the sake of me showing you guys it's awesome and you can edit how long it is you can do pretty much anything you need to do in terms of how it looks so we press ok and now hit spacebar to look at it and boom there you go so it's really simple and there's a whole bunch of different ones that you can use but i'm going to take that out all you have to do is highlight it press delete and that will get rid of it then you have titles again same thing you have some pretty cool ones in there and you can always preview one by clicking on it and then pressing play and that's what you will come up with i mean somebody that doesn't know will think that you created that from scratch and that you really know what you're doing 
I don't know what I'm doing. A lot of these things are pre-installed and that's what I use, but they look good. And then you can go down, there are lower thirds, there are subtitles, ending credits, and then favorites would be anything that you designate as a favorite that will have all of them in this section so you can find them easily. And then say you wanna export a video, it's simple. All you do is click on export and that will bring you to this page where you can choose all your preferences. You can upload it directly to YouTube. You can upload it to Facebook, Vimeo. You can make a DVD. If your computer has a DVD burner, you can add your title. You can add where you want to save it to. If you're saving it to your computer, you can add what format you want it to be. It has a lot of different formats, even GIFs down there. And you can set your resolution and your frame rate as well. So that's why I like Filmora because you can edit videos and add those effects relatively easily. Now, I don't like it as much as iMovie because I can't cut my files as easily as I can in iMovie. And I'll show you guys once I get into iMovie why I think it's a lot quicker and a lot easier to edit in that software. You have a lot more keyboard shortcuts that you can use with that. Whereas this one, you have to rely a little bit more on your mouse. So I'm gonna get out of here now and go to iMovie and I'll show you guys what I usually do. Okay, so this is the interface for iMovie. It looks similar in some ways, but it's also different in some ways. As you can see at the bottom in your workspace, you don't have all those different tracks or it doesn't say that. What you have is your workspace right here. And then once you drag and drop things, iMovie will automatically put it where it needs to be. And in a lot of cases, Wondershare will do that as well, but iMovie, it doesn't have the different sections labeled here. It just automatically drops it where it needs to go. So as you can see, I have media already uploaded into iMovie, and this is just a small video that I need to do for a company that sent me a gaming mouse. So what I'm gonna do is give you the overview of how I edit my video. So as you can see, I already have my intro and my outro uploaded into iMovie. And as a matter of a fact, I created this intro in Wondershare, saved it into my computer, and then I put it into iMovie just because the effects and the picture in picture features in Wondershare are a little bit easier to use. And in a future video, I'll show you how to create an intro because if you already have the Wondershare software, it doesn't make sense for you to pay for an intro if you don't have the extra money. So first what I would do is import the footage that I need to work with. I would do that here. This is all the footage that I have on my SD card and I would just click on what I need. You can hold shift and get multiple clips if you want, then import selected. It will do that with no issues. And then once you do that, it appears down here under the My Media tab. So once you have your footage imported, you would select which one you wanna work on first and drag and drop it into your workspace, or you can use all of them at once. I usually do it one by one so I can make sure each section is good before I go to the next one. So I know that this is the beginning of my video because I always go through the specs and my little intro briefly. So I will drag and drop that one in here first. And I give that a little minute just to get loaded into iMovie. It usually doesn't take that long. And this is why I like editing my videos in iMovie a lot more than I'd like doing it in Wondershare. It's a lot quicker for me because I have the keyboard shortcuts. Now, I know for a fact this video, the beginning of it, I don't need because I was getting everything set up. So all I have to do is click down here. I look at where my audio starts. As you can see right here, there is audio here. And if I wanna make this a little bit bigger, all I have to do is click right here and I can see more of the footage. So I know right here that there is audio. So I'm probably starting to talk right about there. So. I put my playhead right there. I click O for output, then click delete, and all of that is gone now. So I don't have to use my mouse to you know, shorten it or anything of that nature. 
all you have to do, say I want to start right here. I put I, and then if I want this to be where I finish, I put O, and then delete, and it's gone. You can't do that yet with Wondershare. I hope that they add that because that will change the game for Fillmore in my opinion. I don't know that there's a way that you can do it that easily in Wondershare. I have looked, but I haven't come up with it yet. I will just go through specific pieces of the video that I want to be in there and cut out what I want to be out of the video. And it's easy to put transitions in between clips in iMovie and it's easy to do it in Wondershare as well. Like I showed you, you have a lot of different effects that you can use in Wondershare. You have a bunch of transitions in Wondershare, a lot more than you have in iMovie. But for the sake of this video, I'll show you in iMovie how I do my transitions. So say I want um, a transition in between these two clips. Right now, it just goes from one to the next. But if I want there to be a transition in between the two, I will click right here to highlight this section of the footage and then I'll choose one of these transitions. Like I said, there's not that many in iMovie, but I usually use this one. And now as you'll see, when you're going from one to the next, you have a little effect there. Oh, that's a nice feature. It helps you create an effect when you're moving from one section of the video to the next. So say you wanna add some text to your video, you can do that in iMovie as well. All you would do is go up here to the Titles tab, then you have a few that you can choose from. You find one that you like, you double click on it, and then it will go to the top of your video, and from there you can edit it. Just double click on this right here, which is your title. Then you will type whatever you want to be in there. Reese's video. And then from there, you will see it play once you cross over that video part. See? So sometimes I use those in my iMovie movies. Not often. Most of the time I will do it in Wondershare just because you have a lot more options, but I have done it in iMovie as well. But see this footage that I'm using right now is taken through OBS. Now what OBS is, is open broadcaster software and it lets you record your computer screen. So when I'm going through the specs and my intro, I usually record that through OBS so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. And OBS is great. There's a hundred thousand different videos on it on YouTube that do a great job of explaining how to use it. So I will not go through that in this video, but that is how I create my intros and the beginnings of my videos when I'm telling you guys what the specs and what the product is that I'm gonna review. And once I'm happy with the first part of the video, once I've cut out all the ums and my mistakes, I move on to the next section of the video, which would be the unboxing. So I have that pre-installed here. I would just move over to where this ends. And to make it easier, I use this so I can see more of the timeline. Then I will put my playhead right here and I would drag and drop that right there. And as you can see, this is the mouse right here. And I always do voiceovers with my unboxings now. In the beginning, I used to do it in real time, but it's a little bit harder and more tedious to edit those. And if you mess up, you have to get your camcorder back out and go over that same part again. So before I start editing the portion of my video with the unboxing, I take the audio out. And you do that by going right here and decreasing this all the way to zero. So now you don't see any of the squiggly lines because there's no audio attached. And then to do my voiceover is super simple. You click this little microphone in the bottom left hand corner, which says record voiceover. And as you can see right here, you get your audio output right here. So when I'm talking louder, it will go up. When I'm quiet, it will go down. See what I mean? So when I wanna start recording, all I do is click on the red button. It will count down. And once it gets to one, you start going. You start talking and it will capture 
that audio for you. And you can stop recording your voiceover by either pressing the button right here, the red button, or by hitting the space bar. So in a nutshell, guys, that's how I create my videos. You don't have to overthink it or make it harder than it really is. Of course, there will be different components to your videos depending on what kind of videos you make. But if you do reviews and unboxings like I do, and you wanna use OBS to go over the specs and let people know what it is you're gonna be reviewing and unboxing, then you can do that. Download OBS and go through them with your viewers so that they know exactly what these headphones or whatever you're reviewing and unboxing have to offer. But starting out, I suggest if you have a Mac, you go ahead and use iMovie. It's simple, straight to the point, and you can do the basics and a little bit more. If you have a PC, I suggest that you go ahead and get Wondershare because it's easy to use those pre-installed effects and they look great in my opinion. And like with anything, with practice, you'll get better. I mean, you'll be able to edit your videos a lot quicker. You'll know when you need to cut certain things out. You'll know when you need to fix certain things. You'll have an eye for what your video should look like. But the key is practicing, but don't go for absolute perfection. You're never gonna make the absolute perfect video. You don't wanna spend a day on a video that you should spend a couple hours on. But this raw footage that I just uploaded into iMovie will be the next video that I upload after this video. So check that video out so that you can see what the finished product was. Because this is just raw, unedited footage. It's nothing special and I still have to do my voiceover and put everything together. So that's it for this video, guys. Again, if you have Mac, iMovie, or Wondershare, I suggest iMovie. If you have PC, go for Wondershare, in my opinion. If you have any questions or have suggestions for the next video, send me an email or leave me a comment below. Until next time, it's your boy Tech Mo. I'm out. Hope y'all have a great day. Peace.